Uh, hello, uh, my name is Elena Konovalov. I'm a PhD student uh, from uh, James Cook University, Australia. And today I'm going to uh, present uh, a study um, uh, the titled Measuring Tourism, Developing a Regional Level Framework for Assessing Tourism Impacts. And uh, that paper was co-authored uh, co um, by me and uh, my supervisors. So uh, I'll talk, uh, during the presentation, I'll talk about um, social impacts of tourism, uh, what they are, how they have been researched, um, then the process um, that we went through, theoretical frameworks that we based our research on, and present the results of our study. And I'd like to begin uh, by um, a quote um, from a book by two very prominent uh, tourism impact researchers that actually sums up the reason for the study. Uh, failure to specify details of the precise nature of tourists, their numbers, distributions, activities and other characteristics, as well as settings in which um, tourism takes place, results in communication failures among researchers and between researchers and policy makers. So this is a very important point in tourism impacts uh, because uh, we do tend to assume um, that there are uh, different links uh, between uh, different styles of tourism development and associated impacts, but we still don't know what those links are. So, uh, what are the social impacts of tourism? Um, social impacts of tourism um, is a very uh, wide um, term and encompassing variety of different uh, things. So, um, social impacts of tourism is an umbrella-like term and it's used to describe the impacts of tourism on lifestyle of residents, uh, their social life, daily routines, habits, beliefs and values, and on individual behavior, family relationships, safety levels, moral conduct, creative expressions, traditional ceremonies and community organizations. And some of those impacts are perceived positively by residents uh, such as increased employment opportunities and some of the impacts actually can be perceived negatives such as uh, alteration um, to um, traditions to suit the needs of visitors or change uh, in emergence of um, new uh, power groups in the community. So um, the compared to environmental and economic social impacts, um, social impacts of tourism are not um, as uh, researched and not as obvious. The quantification as measurement is actually quite problematic. So because of that, uh, the research is actually mostly progressed by assessing uh, perceptions of social impacts of tourism. And the research of perceptions uh, of social impacts have moved through few stages. In 1980s, um, the research was focused on setting uh, of definitional conceptual boundaries. In 1990s, the research uh, moved on on developing theoretical models. And uh, in the recent decades, uh, the research is focusing on design and development of instruments and their testing. So, um, but um, uh, studies um, that um, focused on uh, assessing uh, perceptions of tourism impacts have been uh, characterized in the literature as um, just a description of um, the um, impacts that um, exist, uh, but they failed uh, to actually um, provide understanding of the mechanisms or uh, things that actually influence um, and um, affect uh, the form formation of those perceptions. And in a recent um, critical review uh, by Australian researchers, um, the following um, quote was made, the research has read a reach, reached a stage where using a medical analogy, the symptoms of the problem are being examined rather than its deep-seated causes. And what we think, um, one of the ways for the research of tourism, uh, social tourism impacts to progress forward is actually um, to be able um, to measure um, tourism at a destination and also community well-being. Um, and then we can um, see um, the links and the mechanism of uh, formation um, of um, different um, uh, interrelations between those two phenomena. So the aim of this particular study was to develop a tourism measures frameworks which would provide a systematic assessment of the degree and type of tourism development at a specific destination with particular relevance to the research of social impacts of tourism. We based our research on a theoretical framework by Faulkner and Tidesville. 
And um, this uh, framework was um, developed and proposed after review of the existing approaches in the field and represents um, and builds uh, on those approaches. So the Faulkner attacks will identify um, two different dimensional dimensions of social impacts. The first one is the extrinsic dimension, uh, which represents the characteristics of tourism de uh, destinations or the nature of tourism it attracts. And the other one is intrinsic dimension, which actually uh, represents uh, res um, characteristics of the residents' reactions um, to, those uh, to, to the uh, tourism that came to their uh, destination. So because our study was focusing um, at the comparing destinations, we decided um, to focus on the extrinsic dimension for which Faulkner and Tadswell identified four uh, variables. Stage of tourism development, ratio of visitors to residents, type of tourists, and seasonality. So um, the research process consisted of three stages, which were kind of interlinked uh, and followed one another. So the first one was to establish variables and measures for the um, phases that I just mentioned. Then we uh, moved on on selection of geographical unit of analysis. And then we surveyed the available secondary data. So when we were um, choosing the geographical unit, uh, we actually uh, focused uh, on um, finding the units that correspond to the uh, tourism destinations as perceived by visitors to those destinations. So there were several geographical frameworks that we considered um, and that are kind of uh, relevant uh, in Australia. So the first one is statistical area level two or statistical local areas, which is a small kind of community size uh, regions. Uh, the second one is uh, tourism regions, which is much bigger regions with only uh, 78 regions for the whole of Australia. Australia. And the third one is uh, local government areas, which uh, sometimes align with statistical areas level two and sometimes represent a few um, statistical areas level two combined together. So as we were looking uh, at testing um, the selected measures, we actually decided to choose um, the units, uh, the um, geographical locations that vary in their uh, level of tourism dependency. And we selected Ali Beach and the Sundays as the region with the highest tourism profile, and Bowen as the region with emerging tourism industry, and Assets and Tablelands region as a region that has small but established tourism industry. So once we knew what kind of data we need at what uh, geographical uh, level, uh, we've conducted a, a survey of secondary data, and then we needed to establish the best methods for extracting the most information uh, from the available data. So the first facet of the extrinsic dimension is a stage of tourism development. And one of the uh, best known and the most applied uh, arguably, uh, models of tourism development is the Butler's um, li life cycle uh, model of tourism development. And um, basically, uh, the argument um, that uh, Butler put together is that tourism destination destinations progress through um, different stages. Um, they start with a um, slow number of tourists arriving to the destination and discovering the destinations, and then they progress um, and become quite popular with tourists. Uh, and subsequently, um, depending on how well the tourism measure and destination can decline and become too polluted and people don't want to come there anymore, or can rejuvenate and become even more popular. So the variables that we established for the uh, stage of tourism development are referred to scale of tourism development, diversity uh, of tourism development, uh, patterns of growth uh, and control over development, and economic reliance on tourism. And if you look at the um, second column, you can see the possible measures. And to be able to actually to judge um, at what stage of tourism development destination is, um, you need to, uh, to do time series analysis uh, for those measures. So um, then, um, when we actually faced uh, the reality, uh, we realized that um, we don't have uh, available time series data for the identified variables for the required number of years to be able uh, to judge at what stage of tourism development the destinations are. Um, so therefore, we could not establish how those particular destinations were um, developed over time. <laughs> 
And also there was no um, current data on control over development at all. So we will not establish if the tourism development and destinations are, lo are owned locally or um, there is a foreign ownership involved. But however, we were uh, able to establish uh, current tourism accommodation profiles for each destination, which we used as a proxy for scale and diversity of tourism development. And we also got some data on current employment in the accommodation and food service industry, which we used uh, as a proxy for current economical reliance on tourism. So if you look at the results, we can see that um, Harley Beach and with Sundays um, has the highest average bed spaces, uh, 220, um, followed by Bourne and the Asset and Tablelands. Uh, also, um, the employment um, in um, accommodation and food service industry is the highest in the Sundays. Um, however, if you look at percentages, um, the percentage is highest in the Sundays, but then numbers uh, in asset and table lands, the total numbers and percentage are slightly different. And we can see that the scale of employment um, in the Sundays is much greater. Okay, then we looked at um, scale and diversity of tourism development. We can see that out of the three regions, with Sundays has the highest diversity. There are all the different um, types of um, tourism development. So the um, tourism accommodation. So the most popular um, the type of tourism accommodation in the Sundays is service apartments. It has uh, with 15 or 4 more, more rooms and in fact this is the only destination that has um, this type of development. Uh, the other two regions um, have um, accommodations that are not as diverse in their type. Uh, in uh, Bowen we have uh, the most popular destinations Got a little fly here. Um, Caron Parks and um, in Asset and Tablelands, we actually have small establishments with 5 to 14 rooms, hotels, motels, and surf service departments that are the most popular uh, type of accommodation. And um, Caravan Parks are also quite prominent in the region. So the second uh, but, um, facet of extrinsic dimension is visitor resident contact. So visitor resident contact um, can vary in the intensity and um, it's um, you know associated with the greater um, impacts on the community well-being whether there is more uh, visitors uh, in the region or with the less um, impact on community well-being when there is less um, visitors to the region. So the variable that we use is the density of tourists um, at the destination and we measured it by average daily visitors density per thousand population or average daily visitors density per kilometer square. So density of tourists really uh, represents um, the amount of international and domestic overnight and day visitors um, that are present at the location uh, at any given day. So he, here is the results. So, so for the Sundays, um, we have um, nearly every second uh, person in the region is a visitor. Uh, and Bowen and Tablelands, as we can see, um, the amount of visitors is much less. Um, when we looked at geographically um, dispersation of visitors, it actually wasn't as useful for us to gain any uh, insights uh, because the um, the confidence intervals that we constructed were uh, much um, bigger for this one. And also uh, in Tablelands region, um, there is uh, uh, quite a big geogra it's a quite a big geographically dispersed, re dispersed region where, where there is lots of national parks and visitors are, uh, and residents are actually concentrated in a small part of the region. So therefore we can see that the density of visitors is negligible. Uh, but um, I do have technical notes that will be available on the website about calculating um, this particular measure uh, that we um, and the formulas that we used and equations for the um, data in Australia that can be apply to any other destinations in Australia or can be adapted um, to the uh, other destinations in other countries. So the third phase is type of visitors uh, and um, different um, destinations tend to attract different type of visitors and some visitors can be perceived as a desirable type of visitors and um, 
residents are happy to have those in their community and some visitors can be seen as nuisances. So the variables that we assessed um, in here um, actually um, are trip related characteristics and demographic characteristics of visitors. And the possible measures were tran uh, type of transport, accommodation and activities, organized versus independent trip, length of stay, travel party, age, income indication, uh, family life cycle or usual uh, place of residence. So uh, methodology. So what we um, did um, look at um, we had all sort of variables available in the data, uh, but the most useful to us when we looked at actual analysis proved to be length of stay, age, and travel party combined. Once we combined those three, we could actually kind of understand what type of visitors come to the uh, regions. And um, as with the previous um, indicator, we actually had to uh, construct um, annual mean of annual estimates because um, the data that we have um, was survey um, type of data and uh, we couldn't use annual estimates because the confidence interval for the intervals for those estimates were too big so um, here we have um, the results uh, and we can see that the three regions are um, quite different from each other with um, with Sundays and um, Ali Beach being are very distinct and Bowen and Tablelands region somewhat similar however there are still um, differences. So we can see that uh, in the Sunday's region uh, visitors that uh, stay around a week or two four days are quite prominent. Um, when we move to Bowen and Tablelands we can see that day visitors represent really significant uh, part. In Tablelands actually it's the most uh, like 65 percent more than half of all visitors to the region and uh, in Bowen also so visitors that stay between two and four nights and one night are also quite significant. So uh, when we looked at the travel party age and length of stay, we can see that visitors to Ali Beach and with Sundays um, tend to be younger compared to the other two regions and stay about a week. Uh, when we look at Bowen and Asset and Tablelands, visitors to those regions um, come for shorter periods of time um, and in Bowen we have um, quite a diverse uh, age groups. Uh, when we look at Asset and there is a distinct group of uh, adult older couples that come for prolonged periods of time which actually indicates that uh, the region is popular with um, snowbirds or um, grey nomads as they're known in Australia, people who go um, caravanning. And also friends and relatives that are relatively young and come for one or four nights for short periods of stay are also very prominent. Um, also when we look at the Sundays we can see that 30% uh, of visitors actually international visitors and in Bowen and Asset and Tablelands uh, the percent of um, international visitors is quite small. And in um, Tablelands uh, region uh, and Bowen also majority of visitors come from um, intrastate, so they're from the same Queensland state. Uh, when in Ali uh, Beach and with Sundays, out of all domestic visitors, half come uh, from other states. Uh, the last uh, very important uh, aspect of um, tourism impacts is seasonality, and uh, again. Uh, Seasonality um, it represents um, differences um, of tourism visits, tourist visits to the destination. So all destin um, all tourist visits can be um, uh, visualized with um, different intensities and. Um, the intensity of tourism impacts tends to increase uh, when uh, seasonality, when there is a high season and tends to de decrease in the low season. So for seasonality we identified pattern, so basically how tourism visits are distributed through the years, uh, through the um, year, and amplitude, the difference between high and low season. And both of those uh, variables can be measured by monthly occupancy uh, rates. And uh, we constructed seasonal index and uh, the higher the seasonal index, uh, high seasonal index represents the high season and the lowest uh, seasonal index represents the low season. So we can see that Ali Beach and Sundays again stands out from the other two regions. Um, the uh, December quarter is when there is the highest influx of tourists to the region and the low quarter falls on June quarter. In Bowen and Tablelands, uh, September quarter is the most popular uh, quarter for visits and the lowest um, 
amount of visits uh, comes on the March quarter. And also the amplitude is not uh, between the low and or the difference between the low and high season is not as great in Sundays compared to Bowen and Asseton Tablelands. So um, basically, after we finished our study, we were able to construct um, tourism profiles for each of the three destinations. So um, we could see that uh, indeed uh, the three chosen destinations, tourism vary in not just in size but also in type of tourism development. So why is it important? Uh, well, the reason is that to be able for us to develop um, different um, sustainable strat sustainable tourism strategies at the destination, we need to understand um, that um, not just communities are different between each other, but also style and type of tourism development that those communities have is actually uh, can be quite different. So, um, concluding remarks, after we went through that process, uh, we understand, kind of understood why there is not much research um, done in that area, uh, because there are certain challenges that researchers face, um, and um, some of them come from working with secondary data, as opposite to um, data that you collect yourself. So, uh, first of all, you need to be able to select an um, appropriate geographical unit, uh, because that actually makes a big difference. And when the data for that unit is not available, you need to be able to um, identify suitable proxies um, that can be used to um, provide you uh, with some kind of indication on what you're looking for. So when you work with secondary data, uh, there is um, challenges with availability and uh, not all data is readily available. Also, you need to examine the explanatory notes that come with data sets because it contains very important information on what that data actually reports on. Also, there are issues about regularity and consistency. Some data sets are not published regularly and also between the publications of the same data sets, there might be change of units or criteria by which units are entered into the frame. And um, locating and accessing the data is quite challenging and also the data comes in a variety of formats such as Excel spreadsheets, uh, PDF reports and GIS files. So the researchers have to be comfortable uh, working with a variety of uh, modern software tools. So the future research directions, uh, the first one and the immediate one that I'm working at currently is established set of measures for community well-being. So now we know how to measure tourism at the destination. Uh, the next step is to establish the set of measures for community well-being. Once we have those both uh, phenomena measured, hopefully, uh, we can proceed to looking at the links between the two and what kind of relationships exist in those uh, communities. And um, Hopefully, um, once this research is completed, uh, we can then develop tourism planning and development um, tool that will help regional communities with existing tourism development uh, to manage and mit mitigate tourism impacts, and the regional communities that are looking into expanding or introducing tourism development, um, it will help uh, better plan and manage um, the development uh, that will maximize the benefits of tourism to community, for community well-being. And activities. So um, you can, uh, if you are located in Australia, you can um, try and um, apply the set of measures that we identified to a different destination within Australia without changing anything, because those set of measures can be applied to any destination within Australia. Or if you're in a different country, you can actually try to establish uh, what are the geographical units that uh, exist uh, in your country um, that data is collected for. Uh, also, you need, can identify main statistical bodies that collect data on tourism and community in your community. Uh, what are the databases that exist in your country? And what are the best methods for working with the data that exists? So, um, if you have uh, any more questions on this material, you can read the available um, 